Okay, with today's example, what we're going to do is we're going to go over some very basic Excel stuff to get everything ready to go. And uh, we'll be dealing with some of those functions that we're going to be using a lot in this class, which hopefully at this point you already know, but if you're not, that's a good time to, to do a little bit of review. So the Quality Sweaters company sells hand-knitted sweaters. The company is planning to print a catalog of its products and undertake a direct mail campaign. The cost of printing the catalog is twenty thousand plus ten thousand, or excuse me, plus ten cents per catalog. The cost of mailing each catalog, including postage, order forms, and buying names from a mail order database, is fifteen cents. In addition, the company plans to include direct reply envelopes in its mailing and incurs twenty cents in extra cost for each direct mail envelope used by a recipient. The average size of the customer order is $40, and the company's variable cost per order, primarily due to labor and material costs, averages about 80% of the order's value, so $32. The company plans to mail 100,000 catalogs, and it wants to develop a spreadsheet model to answer these three questions. How does a change in the response rate affect profit? What response rate does the company at for what response rate does the company break even? And if the company estimates a response rate of 3%, should it proceed with the mailing? So all important questions. So if you go to the model portion of this, you'll see that I've already kind of set things up for you, so it's ready to go. And so as we look at this, we can see all of our inputs. Now, throughout the course, you will see that I try to follow what the book uses for color coding. And so what I mean by that. So you will see blue cells. And the blue cells are inputs. And what are inputs? Inputs are given information. It's stuff that we're told. Like fixed cost of printing is 20000 We have no control over that. It just is what it is. The next one is red. And red are our decision variables. What are decision variables? This is what I decide. I'm going to decide to mail 100,000 catalogs. I'm going to decide to mail 90,000 catalogs. So this is the decision that we're making. This is usually the variable that's really going to drive everything that we do in the class. Because what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to be looking at those gray cells, and those gray cells are our outputs. And that's, you know, max profit, minimum loss, best return. So we're going to be shooting for those. Those are the gray values. And they're going to be put together using equations, using our input and our decision variables to give us our outputs. We can't change the inputs, but we can change the decision variable. So the decision variable in all of these things is always going to trace back to our output or our objective in some way. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put together some really basic stuff because I want to put together this model to calculate out profit. Now, one of the really cool things that we are going to see with Excel is what's called indexing. And that is when we have formulas in these cells and then we drag them down. And what happens is every time that you go in a row, which these are the rows, Every time you go down one in a row, it will change the flag. It will change the number of the rows, so it will roll down. And then we have the columns that if you drag it, so the columns will change G to H to I. And taking a look at this, uh, this example, it, it really doesn't matter, the whole range name thing. I will, um, you know what, we'll do that in the next example when we're actually doing some indexing. So let's... Uh, Let's just start going and taking a look at what we've got. So I've got the fixed cost of the printing, which is 20 grand. I have the variable cost, and you can see that I've got the 10 cents for printing and the 15 cents for mailing. Uh, we're going to play around with the decision variable here, which is 100,000. And I'm going to go to home, and I'm going to put the, the, the comma separator in there. Anything that's really big like that, I like having as I like having as um, a comma separator because there there is a lot going on there. And so here we have our average order cost of $40, our variable cost per order, which is 
the 80% plus the return envelope. And then we have our response right here. Now, typically, I usually don't like rolling these things together just because if things change, let's say the postage goes up to 25 cents. So why don't we change this a little bit? We're going to add, I'm going to right click here and just insert. I'm going to shift my cells down and then I'm going to do that again. So insert shift cells down because what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this just a little bit. And so we're going to go return mailer and that's going to be 20 cents. And um, what are we going to call that? That 80%. That is, uh, we'll call that the variable percentage. Variable percentage. And we'll put that at 80%. Of course, that comes in as 80 cents because that's set to a currency. So there we go, 80%. And so then I'm going to do this. So then my variable cost per order was going to be equals the average order. I'm going to multiply that by the variable percentage. And then I'm going to add to that my return mailer. Now, I don't have to parentheses that because the multiplication happens before addition because Excel runs on BEDMOS, so brackets, exponents, divide, multiply, add, subtract. And so order of operations there is fine. And uh, it says that I made a mistake in my thing. It's because I have an equal sign at the end again, so I will let it correct that. So there, we still get the 32.2. And so like I said, I usually, um, I usually like doing this because I don't, I very down on burying any kind of numbers in here. And so this is the 25 cents. And let's do the same thing. Let's, uh, let's break that out. So I'm going to insert. I'm going to shift all those down. And so this would be variable cost of printing. And then variable cost of mailing. So the printing is 10, the mailing is 15, so we'll put in 10 cents, we'll put in 15 cents. Okay, there we go. And once again, I don't like burying anything into those cells because I want things to be easy to change because what happens if, oh, the price of the mailing goes up a nickel? Now you have to figure out where it is and dig it out. Otherwise, here it's just right there. You can change it. Everything's great. All right, so let's go. So the next thing we want to do is we get response rate. Let's build up this table here. And so number of responses. Well, if my response rate is 8%, I'm going to take the number mailed. I'm going to multiply that by my response rate. And I'll see that I've got 8,000 people that are going to be responding to this. Now, if this is at a weird thing, let's say... Uh, Let's see if I 8.21. Well, oh, actually, that works out well. We'll just leave it as it is, and we'll play around with it later and see if we need to round it or anything like that. Okay, so the next thing that we have is revenue. So our revenue is going to be the number of people that respond. We'll multiply that by their average order. And so that gives us, if we have an 8% response rate, $320,000. So fixed cost of printing, we already have. That's that right here, so we'll bring that over. And then we have total variable cost of printing and mailing. And so that's going to be, we're going to incur this for everything that we send out. So we've got number mailed, and then we're going to multiply it by, let's do the sum of our variable cost of printing and mailing. And so that would tell us that our variable cost on that stuff is going to be $25,000. And then what we're left with is the total variable cost of our orders. And so that is just going to be the number of responses that we have. 
and we're going to multiply that by the variable cost per order. And then we can sum up our total costs, which will be all of these ones here. Just do a sum of those three numbers. And that gives us our total cost. And so profit is just going to be our revenue minus our costs. So in this situation where we start out with an 8% response rate, we're going to expect to make $17,400. Okay, we have not answered any of our questions yet, but we have set up our spreadsheet model so that we can answer those questions. So in the next video, we'll actually use this spreadsheet model to answer the questions.